Hi, this is Summer with Summer's Tips and Stitches, and I have a super awesome video for you today. Now, I was going to call it a yarn chat, but I'm actually going to refer to this video in the title to um, the name of the shawl, because this or this sweater. This is the main reason I'm making this video, but I have a lot of fun things going on, and so it's just... I thought, you know what, rather than making little videos here and there, I'm going to make a big one. So, um, I'm going to throw out oh, some yes. real quick, real quick things that I'm excited about and I'm then sorry. talk about this sweater. That's okay. As you know, my kids are here. You want to quick say hi before I get sorry, into the busy? Mom. That's okay. Okay, quick hi. say hi. Hello. Okay. So, the first thing that I was super excited about, um, my sister emailed me. A bunch of you all yarn friends messaged me. I won Holly from the Proper Pineapples. It's my birthday mysterious mystery crochet along shawl from the Instagram. Um, so I was super excited about that, you guys, because first of all, I loved that shawl. Like I said, I've never made one like that before, and it was amazing. Um, and then I made another one. <laughs> You know, it's that that thing that crocheters have that when you love the pattern, you're like, ooh, I'm going to make another. So definitely head on over to Ravelry. I'll put a link in the description. Check out that shawl because it really was great to make. And you can make it with different types of yarn and different hook sizes, and it's not going to mess up the pattern, and you'll be great. Okay, um, item number two. I am... So there's someone close by to me that literally probably lives like 15, 20 minutes away and she started her own YouTube channel. So I wanted to give her a little shout out. Her name's, her YouTube channel is Knitting Debs Nook. She has one video out. So go give her some encouragement. I think she did great for her first video. You, you all saw my first video. So <laughs> she did great. Um... Yeah, so I'll put a link in the description to her, which led me to this idea once the school year ends, because May is a hot mess month for me. Literally every weekend has multiple things going on. I mean, even this weekend was Hans prom, uh, Cinco de Mayo celebration slash birthday for my daughter. Next weekend is the second half part of her birthday, her friend's party, Mother's Day, Boy Scout outings, I mean, every weekend is like two or three things. So it won't be till the end of the school year. But all of that leading up to, I want to do a meetup. Um, I think I have like four or five folks from like Fond du Lac, Nina, Menasha, Appleton area that watch my videos. And so there is a local yarn shop in Nina called Fiber. And so keep your ears and eyes open and I'm going to contact her to see if on one of her open knit nights or her Saturday, we can head on over and just knit or crochet together in her super awesome store. And then we can do our favorite things, drink some tea and coffee, knit or crochet, and maybe buy some yarn. <laughs> so that is something I'm trying to plan for the, um, the folks that I know live very close to me. Um, and then also I have my sweet treat shawl or the summer crossing shawl designer Jane Wynn from Scraptastic Yarns. I have a winner to show you. Now I have not mastered being able to show you in the video how it's going. It's either I show you guys what's going on or I don't be in the video. So I wrote it down this time. Jessica Snyder chose this as one of her suggestions so she is one that she has won this shawl the sweet treat shawl with um the sweet treat ombre from red heart in the summer crossing shawl so jessica snyder and i will go to your comment in the video because this goes all the way back to the original um crochet crafters choice challenge video where I asked everybody to choose their favorite yarn and the favorite pattern of the three that I selected and um, the first one was Suzanne Berkey she had chosen a confetti P 
peacock confetti shawl in the shell stitch. And she received that. I mailed that out last week. And so the next one was this right here. I still have to weave in this end though, Jessica. So hopefully I get that done before you message me. So Jessica, please email me at summerstipsandstitches at gmail.com so that you can tell me where you would like me to mail you this beautiful shell, or no, summer crossing shawl. If you do not want it, go ahead, let me know in that email or in the comment below because I'm going to go back to that original post. I'm going to tell you congratulations, you won this shawl. And if then you don't want it, just let me know and uh, we'll go from there. So that would be awesome if you can let me know in approximately a week. So this is Sunday. Ooh, let's skip Mother's Day. Monday, if you can let me know by Monday, May 13th, because I believe the 12th is Mother's Day. If you can, And that's my half day. If you can get back to me before then, we'll um, I'll get this shipped out to you if you want it. Jessica Snyder. I'll also put your name in the description of this video. Okay, so that's all the business. Holly, I want her mystery crochet along. Check out Knit and Deb's Nook. I'm planning a meetup at Fiber Yarn Shop in Nina. And then Jessica won this beautiful crop, summer crossing shawl designer, Jane Wynn. Okay, now what have I been making? I made this sweater or this blouse, this top. It's not really a sweater, right? Um, let me take, I got my notes. I believe I got this notebook from Yolanda. Keep calm and be a mermaid. And so I'm, I'm doing better at taking my notes. So this way I'll be able to make sure I say everything correctly to you. So that is my YouTube notebook. Okay, so this is the pattern. This is Madeline by Brianna. I'm not going to say her last name. It's way too hard. You were probably seeing it backwards, so that will be difficult for you. Um, <laughs> I'll put a link in the description to this pattern. Um, it I purchased it off of Ravelry from recommendation of Dolly from Moonfire Crafted. Put a link into Dolly. This is so exciting. This is absolutely amazing. So I, I can't believe I'm going to tell you all this, but here it is. I wear a size 16, 18 in clothing, and I made her pattern for the extra large, and it came out 99% perfect. I think if I, which I will be making it again, I would lengthen my sleeve because you make it in a rectangle and then you fold it in seam. It is a <laughs> little snug here, but it is made out of cotton. So I'm gonna try to back up a little bit so you guys can see it. So this is it. Isn't that amazing? I really love it. It was made in similar construction to the cozy sweater, that purple cozy sweater I made a while ago. So I wasn't too afraid. You knit a back panel. No, you crochet. You crochet <laughs> a back panel, then you crochet the front panel. And then the front panel is a little different. It's a little shorter. And then you do a little, a little something up here for the right side. And then you finish it off. And then you join and you do a little something for the left side. It kind of makes a, a T. Yes. Let me see if I can fold this all up so you can see without giving away her secrets. There. This is the little something that I'm talking about. You make this little something. And then you make the arms, and the arms are essentially a rectangle that you seam down here, and then you sew them on. Now, first, because I made that other purple one, I was aware straight away that this was going to be what is called a drop sleeve. I did not know about that before until you lovely YouTube Yarny friends had mentioned in the comments that the reason I didn't love that sleeve is because it was a drop sleeve. So this is a deal. Because I have a little bit of an extra something going on here, I knew that this drop sleeve seam was going to be further over, not on my shoulder because of that other pattern. And I wasn't too worried about it. But I did sew it loose because I knew that it was going to be going over a big area. And then I crocheted this. Now, I did change this pattern, friends. 
if you see from the picture, if I've thrown it around enough times, uh, Brianna gives it a nice long sleeve. And I am not a long sleeve gal. I'm very hot and I, I'm hot. <laughs> no, but I'm very warm temperature. <laughs> And I work in a stressful job, so I get the stress sweats. So I made it a short sleeve. I just cut it off here. I measured from here to here, which for me was 14 and a half inches. And when I achieved that length, I stopped rather than going all the way here. So that was the only change I did. I think, though, if I were and when I do <laughs> make this again, I'm going to add a l just maybe, maybe I'll add a row of single crochet on this side a row of single crochet on that side and join it just to give a little bit more room just a little bit because it's a little tight but it is cotton right so it's gonna shrink or it's well it could shrink then I'll be in big trouble so I'll probably gonna wash this delicate cold lay flat to dry and then every time give it a reshaping um so I think that was the only change no weight I did another change. Let's see if I can show you this. I'm gonna pause it to get you a good view. Okay, so the other change I made was right here. I made it open. I did not sew all the way down because you can see it wouldn't meet. Well, maybe it would, but it would have been bulky. So I left it open on either side, a little bit of open to kind of give it a loose, a looser fit. So yeah. Honestly, I think this did really a great job at um, sizing this appropriately so that it would fit me. And I made it in a fit, and I guess that has always been my biggest fear. My biggest fear in making tops, which this is now my third, is that I would make it and I'd go to put it on and it wouldn't fit. And then I would have wasted all that yarn. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm telling you folks, I'm making another, I'm going to go to Hobby Lobby and I'm going to buy their cotton wheels because I don't really love driving to Michael's really. And I know that they have their new cotton cakes, but I'm going to go to Hobby Lobby and buy theirs. Maybe if I got a wild hair and if I have an extra like 45 minutes in my life, which lately not going to happen. Maybe I would drive to Michael's and grab those, but I'm going to make another one that that's the point in some different cotton. The cotton I used for this was the wonderful. Okay. So you know how I gushed over that cotton that I got from my giveaway that Michelle mailed me. <laughs> um, Nikki said, Hey Summer, I've got some of that. And she mailed me the premier home giant, uh, giant cotton. She mailed me two of them. And the reason she mailed me two is I thought I would need a lot of this cotton. Because I swear when I calculated how much yarn I was going to need, that I was going to need 1,200 yards. And she mailed me two of these. So thank you, Nikki. Um, but I only needed one. And I mean, I don't, this looks pretty decently full. I mean, I used a little, I made half a sleeve out of this. I had to do half of one sleeve out of it. And then I did all the sewing together with this. And then I did the neck, the neckline, which is just single crochet. So I think, I think I did my math wrong. Well, I mean, that's not surprising. Those of you that watch these videos know that math and I are not friends. So I think if you, you could probably get a full one out of this. Definitely read through your pattern and do your math better than I did and find out the yardage, but This is what I used. I love it. It feels good. It's stretching nicely um, The only real tip I have is when you're sewing it together You definitely need to pay attention to where you're lining it up because of the pattern um, But that's that I really love this. So thank you, Dolly, for a wonderful pattern recommendation. You're right. This is a wonderful pattern. Easy to make. Um, it probably took me approximately a week. I worked a little bit of it on Tuesday, May, no, the end of April. I started this the end of April because I only can crochet at work on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And so I was working on the panels then. Oops, little hair problem there. Um, and then I 
I worked on it Friday night. You guys, I worked on it until I fell asleep and then I'd wake up and I'd like, ooh, frog what I would do. And then I'd crochet, I'd fall asleep and I'd wake up and I'd look at it and be like, what am I doing? <sighs> so yeah, I tend to crochet late into Friday night to the point where I basically have to redo everything I crocheted the next morning. And so I woke up early Saturday and I think Saturday was, that was yesterday. That's when I was starting to get a little nervous that these sleeves weren't going to fit me. And I got a little frustrated and I stopped working on it. And then I started working on these. So I made myself a very crude non-pattern. I just crocheted it myself, made it up. These little towels that hang on, hang in your kitchen. So I made one more of these yesterday. Um, and then I was like, last night, I was like, girl, you got to get this done. So I sewed one arm last night and then I woke up this morning. I sewed the other arm on and I seamed it and then I put it on and I came down here to make a video. So yeah, that is what I've got going on. Now, as for these, I don't have a pattern. I literally just, I bought a cheap towel from the Dollar Tree because I thought that this, this would be, I mean, see-through enough that I could poke my hook through. And I got a little tiny hook. I want to say like the kind that you use for a crocheting lace. And I poked it in and I pulled the loop up to the top and I crocheted all the way across. And then the next row I did was single crochet and then I did a row of half double, do half double crochet decrease. So I did three, two together, three, two together. And then I would do another row of single crochet and then I would do another row of half double crochet decreasing until I got to a decent amount and then I just, I wung it, I winged it, folks, that about, about two inches, three inches, and then I folded it over. I just, see that? I just folded it over and then I jammed my crochet th hook through all three layers. Yeah, I did. And then I crocheted across right here. Then I folded over the other half and I jammed it in all three and I crocheted across. And then I just finished it off. And then I crocheted straight rows back and forth. I did ha did single crochets, some of those half double crochet decreases all the way up to where I thought, oh, that looks good. And then I just did, uh, actually for this one, I did all half double crochets until I got to the point to where I thought I wanted to do a button. And then I did treble crochets so that it would be tall enough that I could put a button through there. And then I finished it off with half double single crochet. And that's that. That's all I did. I think these are very easy to fake. And that's what I did. They don't look perfect. They certainly don't look as good as my grandma's did. But they hang on the oven door. And that's the point. Because that's where my husband likes to hang towels. And when the kids walk by, they brush off. Or if you open the oven, they fall down. And so... These now can hang on it. And then we have a drawer with our trash in it. I know, isn't that weird? It's just a drawer. You pull it out and it's a big trash can. Anyway, my husband likes a, a towel on that handle too. So I hang one of those on there. And that way you can wash your hands or wipe your hands off. Uh, not ideal that they're white. Obviously, I know they're going to get dirty, but that's all the Dollar Tree had. My Dollar Tree is not as awesome as some of y'all's where you can buy yarn. I think I'm going to try to go to Walmart and buy a little bit better quality towel and see what I can make out of that. So this was a very busy video. It was. I'll have lots of links in the description. So please don't forget to click on that little arrow so that you can see the link to the Summer Crossing Shawl. You can see the link to this beautiful pattern, uh, the Madeline sweater, which I don't know if I mentioned you guys. My sister's name is Brie for Brienne, and my daughter's name is Madeline. So when I saw that this pattern was the Madeline sweater by Brianna, I was like, I have to make it. Um, let's see here. There'll be links to Dolly, the gal that recommended this. There'll be a link to Jane from Scraptastic Yarn, the designer of this sweater or the shawl. And there will be a link to the new, the new YouTube yarn friend, um, Knit and Deb's Nook. So please don't forget to stop in there and to that little link box 
and make sure you check those folks out. Also, I'd like to let you know, a while ago I made a video about my 10 favorite patterns, my favorite things that I've made. I have edited that description box because more folks have done that tag. So if you are wanting to quickly find some folks, that's um, you can just go to that video of mine or maybe type it into the into a Google, YouTube, see what you come up with. But anyway, some more folks have done that, so I had to edit the list of people because that was a, tra a tag from Katrina's Katrina's Creations Crafting Podcast. That's what it was. Um, if I am when I'm typing this up, if I think of more t things that I need to put in the description, I will. <laughs> Usually what I do is after I watch, after I make this video, I then watch it right away and I start listing all the tags I said I would do. And then if I still have more time and I have not been bothered by my children, I start doing those right away. But that's all I have for this wonderful Cinco de Mayo. My wonderful sweater. I finished it in time to go to our event. I'm so excited. Um, so thanks for watching and subscribing. Thanks for sharing my videos and chatting in the comments with me. Thank you for all those folks that email me. And for new subscribers, welcome. Check out my old videos. Um, they all seem to pile on each other, as in talking about old things and new videos. And this is my goofball Flinny. Um, <laughs> until then, happy crafting. Happy crafting. Bye. Bye.